Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to today's episode of Talking Point. I am your host, Saeed Niaz Ahmed. In our studios today, we have a very distinguished guest, Mr. Habib Rahman. Until recently, Mr. Rahman was the Chief Executive Officer of Joint Council for Welfare of Immigrants. Presently, he is the Chair of Migrant Voice. Welcome to the show, Mr. Rahman. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank and you for making time alaykum. for us. Alaykum. And alaykum. good wishes to all your uh, spectators and audience. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I'm so happy that you could find time for NTV's uh, program. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I understand that JCWI, which you headed for 16 years, commendably headed for 16 Thank years, uh, is uh, an independent UK charity which campaigns for justice, advancement of rights and elimination of discrimination. It's involved in nationality and refugee law and policy campaigns against unfair legislation and seeks to give migrant communities a voice on issues that directly affect them. That's very holy. That's very nice. Uh, I am sure that uh, while you were the head of JCWI, you were also responsible for achieving some of the targets. Now, you are chair of uh, the Migrant Voice, uh, which you recently joined? About a year ago. About a uh, year ago. Uh, this has been a long journey for you. Uh, just before we were, we went on air, you were talking about uh, your experience uh, with some of the human rights issues when you were at a school. How did this long journey begin? When did you realize that this is an issue that you have to take up and it will be probably your uh, main uh, profession in the life? The people come to me and they ask me what you are. Some people call me, are you an academic? Mm -hmm. Are you a lawyer? Are you uh, what you are? You know, do you do all this work. And I just tell them in one word, mm -hmm. I'm a human rights activist mm -hmm. from very early my years of my life. Right. And until my retirement from JCWI, I have been a human rights activist. Right. And this journey, as you say, it started very early. You may call it coincidence, call it accident, and it started very early, from very early right. life. I was in the then East Pakistan, right. and I was a young boy of just 13 turned 14. I was in class 9 of mm -hmm. high school, and I was asked to observe 21st February in the uh, school. Asked by who? Asked by some friends and mm -hmm. uh, uh, some political people also. They <coughs> said, why don't you students in mm -hmm. high school uh, in, in Silet, there's a school in Kulaura, Yes. I says, what, why what don't you? It's 1960. 1960. Uh, if I remember it correctly, and Ayub Khan, General Ayub Khan, then was in power. Martial law government going on in yes. pa uh, Pakistan, yes. and all these celebrations or mourning, yes. uh, observe, observing of 21st February was like banned. Yes. You can't do it. People were not daring to come and observe 21st February. School, in the school compound, we were not allowed, headmaster said, you can't do it inside the school, you'll put me, put me in trouble. And then I called my fellow uh, students to come out in a field, mm -hmm. and we observed with black flags and mourning and what we do about 21st February. Did you have a Shaheed Minar there? We didn't have a Shaheed Minar at that time. Mm -hmm. And I must admit, I also did not know all the meaning of 21st February. I was only 14 years old. And I did that. We did and we shouted, Bengali should be the state language and all these things we did. And then I was arrested with uh, some friends of mine. Some mm -hmm. of them are adults, you know, mm -hmm. the political people. And I was a school student and I was put in detention. And then my father, my family was very concerned. I was a young boy. And then my father, I remember, argued with subdivision and police officer. And he said, he's a young juvenile you must release him. And then he was a clever officer, of course, knew the law, and he said, you can go, you're a young man. That's my starting, and I don't want to go into detail right. about that. And right. then, of course, I did my metric, I was very busy, and then 
I went to college. Mm -hmm. That's my awareness started about human being, human rights. Was it somewhere in Dhaka? And, and the college I went to, MC College, Silet, mm -hmm. uh, Silet Government mm -hmm. College. And then I went, and one of the things I did quickly, I went to the principal and I said, there is no student body in college, student representation in college. You must union, you must allow us to form a student uh, union in the college. The, head must, uh, the, the principal was very um, strict principal at that time, and he was not in the beginning, he threatened me, I'll throw you out, I'll rusticate you, and all this thing. Finally, he admit, came to accede to my request. And uh, our request, there are other friends with me. And I must mention, uh, now the education minister, uh, Nur Islam Nahid, was in the college at the time with me. He was mm -hmm. senior than me. He was in degree and I was in the intermediate. And then we did the election and I joined Students' Union, East Pakistan Students in yeah. Ipsu at that yeah. time. Yeah. And I, in Students' Union, I, I joined in politics, student politics and became, uh, got elected, become secretary of the college at mm -hmm. the time. And that's my beginning of my life. Then mm -hmm. came to Dhaka University. And in short, I became very much involved in politics in Dhaka University, in Dhaka University. and in both uh, student politics and cultural movement. And I became the secretary of um, uh, Sanskriti Sangsat, that mm -hmm. time is a national organization and uh, doing all the cultural, you remember probably Khaza Shahabuddin that time and says Ravinda Sangit should be banned and we were we raised our voice against that and did all the movement. Yeah, now, Pratham uh, editor, Mathieu Rahman, uh, he was the chairman of Sanskriti Shankar, that was the secretary. That's how my life started. Then came to London to study in UCL. Which, which hall were you attached to or living in? I was, uh, in the beginning, I was in Fazlul Hall, mm -hmm. and then I came to Iqbal Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are another political reason for yes. that. You know, Iqbal was the cesspit it, it of was, all, the, all kind close, of activities. It was cl closer to Eden College. <laughs> yeah, co closer to Eden College. <laughs> well, why Eden College? <laughs> You were no, involved in Eden College. No, 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 I was. I was. <laughs> that's g girls. I, I know girls' college, but are no. you lecturer there? No, 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 no. I didn't teach there. Yeah. Uh, I was at Ipswich Hall too, see, but uh, oh, yeah. I did not stay. I, I, okay. I, 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 we used to live in Dhanmandi, and I was just attached to. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, this JCWI. In the introduction, I have said that what you do, see, but. Uh, we have not talked about how did you do this, you see. Yeah. Who funded, funded JCWI? Yeah, JCWI is a very uh, renowned organization. Yes. And I'll come to, I'll explain to you how you got, I got involved and I yes. got recruited in JCWI and when I come to my London life. Uh, it's running for nearly 50 years. JCWI has established, it came out of a anti-racist movement in 60s. Mm -hmm in Britain, when the new bulk of migration took place from the so-called new Commonwealth countries, like Caribbean islands and Indian subcontinents and African countries, right. uh, newly independent African countries. And there was a racism in this country, uh, that the people were against all this immigration. Mm -hmm. And the anti-racist movement, it was called Campaign Against um, Racism and uh, for Democracy card. And that became a very massive movement. Uh, I know the history, I was not yeah. here then. And then the people like now uh, the late uh, Sir Michael Dummett, uh, Professor Jeffrey Wilson mm -hmm. of Oxford, Michael Dummett of Oxford, Vishnu Sharma uh, from uh, South Hall, uh, prominent uh, politician, our Tasad uh, Bukamant, uh, now late, uh, and then many <coughs> eminent academics and lawyers, uh, Lord Lester, a lawyer, they got involved and they said we should have an organization which will speak for the legal rights of migrants in this country right. and campaign for those rights. And we should have a specialist organization should established. And that was established in 1967 through a conference and that's why it's called Joint Council for the Welfare of Migrants. There are about hun over 100 organization, community organization got together right. and they formed an organization so called Joint an Council. Umbrella organization. Umbrella organization. And that with that ethos, mm -hmm. the policies, they will campaign for the rights of migrants, mainly legal campaigns, and also do the legal work 
against any draconian, any policies the government introduced against the interest of migrants. And for 50 years, it's coming, next year will be 50 years of JCWI. This organization has been doing that work very competently. And not me, I'm not talking, I was there 16 years only. Before me, illustrious people like Fiona McTaggart, Vishnu Sharma, Ian Martin, who became the Secretary General of Amnesty International afterwards. He was the, my position before. Claude Moras, which is a, who is MAP now, and ours, IPP's chairperson, you know, the, the police complaints authorities chair, uh, chairwoman. Uh, they were all in my positions. All the directors, they, they, their position is to be called director then. My position became chief executive afterwards. And then they all campaigned and fought, did the legal cases, negotiated the government for the rights of migrants in this country. That's in short JCWI's work. Right. And I'll give you an example. Just before I left, in, you know, there are so many cases we did. One of the cases I uh, say, Kila, is JCWI's case, when government tried to, the then labor government actually int introduced the age discrimination, marriage age discrimination. The, if, if anyone wants to marry a non-EU citizen, they have to over 21 years of age. Both parties have to be over yeah. 21. And we took that case, and I say it's discriminatory, and it's against the principles of ECHR, European Convention of Human Rights. And we won, and government had to change. This is just an example. We did so many other cases, and we won that case. And then government had to parliament. If this is the first case, parliament had to change the law because law become null and void, because Supreme Court, there's a conflict of law, they said. Parliament set the law. There was a big argument in Supreme Court that Parliament sets the law, courts only interprets. But Supreme Court found that it's not right because it's conflicts with international law and also mm -hmm. natural justice. Yeah, what was the basis of this 21, age 21? They were saying, the government's reasons was that young women, if they're 18, uh, or with parental consent, 16 or 17, they get married. They can be forced to get married to someone. That's a pretext. And we proved in the case, as you know, in Supreme Court and High Court and Court of Appeal, we said this is not so. That those people can be forced, even if they're 30, you know, they, they, they can be forced. Forced marriage is not because they're young, they're forced and got married and all this thing. So that's the thing, because government, this is a pretext they use to change the law. Right. Uh, so this is, in short, in JCWI, and JCWI did so many campaigns, I'll come to because it's quite a long program, I know, and a lot of work, I'll talk about JCWI, well, but other things. Well, we'll we need to take a break here, yep. and when we come back, we'll definitely talk a lot more about JCWI's good yes. work, and I would also like to know who funded you, because uh, if it's a joint council, an umbrella, an umbrella of so many, so many interests, see, yes. so whose best interest was to pay the piper. Okay. Okay. Thank you for being with us. I will be back soon after this short break. Thank you.